Okay, hello there, I'm Dennis. And in this video, I'm coming to you from deep within the void. <laughs> we're gonna start this video off by going to distrowatch.com and we looked up Void Linux. One thing I don't understand after being in it about a week or so is why it's only rated at 43. And we'll get into that more in a minute here. But anyway, you can see that it's Linux distribution, it's independent and its origin is in Spain. And it has a bunch of different desktops, Cinnamon, Enlightenment, Gnome, LXDE, LXQT, Mate, XFCE, and I assume there's probably some more, some window managers or something. Anyway, if you click on that link right there, it'll open up the Enter the Void page, the Void Linux distribution page. And this is where my journey started. If you watched my first video, we went over a lot of this stuff how to install packages and uh, uh, restarting the init or the system services and we got into that a little bit but i've installed this on hard drive now and it's working and everything i do and wanted to do is available and it just works right out of the box the audio worked right out of the box the video worked right out of the box webcam obs i mean other than typical configurations, all of it just worked. So I went to the packages right here and you open that up and this allows you to look and I covered this in the first video. So this will allow you to look for packages and you're going to run across some like the GNOME disk utility. When you click on that, you'll see that it brings you to the GitHub page, but it you can see also it's a SRC, a source package. And I think I already had that open, and I did. <laughs> so it's available as a source package, but not as a typical binary in their repositories. So the next thing you do is you want to know, well, how do you install that? Because you, if you just go XBPS hyphen install GNOME disk, it'll return an error. I hadn't found it. This journey is going to take us to the, another GitHub page called the Void Packages. And if you'll go down, you find the quick start guide, which is what I've, I've done here. I'll go ahead and minimize this and bring up my notes. Uh, this, this, all these links right here will be in the description. And I used these in my first video and I've only added a couple. This went through the installer and restarting services without rebooting. In order to do that, you'll have to install a package called X tools to be able to use X check restart although i recommend it for for that as well but it also will bring in git and you're going to need that you will need git if you want to if you want to install restricted packages you, you will need git and i'll show you why here in a second all right so we just covered that we go to the packages there and we can we look up whatever packages we want to find out if it's readily available in a repository or as a source package these were all available as regular binary packages in their repositories. So it was Audacity, Caden Live, OBS, which is not called OBS Studio, it's just OBS, SSR, which is short for Simple Screen Recorder, VLC, GUVC View, Audacious, Audacious Plugins, Krita, Blender, GIMP, GNOME System Monitor, Events for Document Viewer, Chromium, Qubit Torrent, LibreOffice, Asunder, Rosero, K3B, DVDNG, Handbrake, M Player, SM Player, Shotcut, Nomax, HPLIP for printing, PC Man FM, Calculator, Notepad QQ, Image Writer, which is the, I believe is the SUSE Image Writer. Yeah, SUSE Studio Image Writer, and X Archiver, Hard Info, HTOP, Octo X. BPS, which is a graphical package installer, we're right here. Looks a lot like the uh, Octo package in FreeBSDs. Works a little different, and we'll show you that later here too. So let's see, I was at Octo XBPS, and then I got the Pulse Audio plugin, which is what you see right here. And then we got the Whisker menu, which you can see right here. Got XF Burn, Bash Completion. NumLock X, Celluloid, 
Mugshot, C Matrix, and NeoFetch. So all of those are available through your regular repositories. That's quite a list of programs. Now that I didn't include any games in this list, but you can see there's a bunch of I got a bunch of games installed as well. In order to install those restricted packages here, you'll see it's git clone, git, uh, etc. I've copied down all that over to my notepad and or feather pad and taking out all the stuff in between. I already said we're going to need that package git. So if you've installed Xtools, you have it. Otherwise, you need to do a XBPS install GIT. Once you get that done, you can run this command right here, which is, like I said, directly off of their web page and instructions so you run those first three there get the clone that's going to take about two minutes then you'll cd in the void packages and then you'll run this period forward slash xbps hyphen src source space binaries hyphen bootstrap and what that'll do is it'll bring in all the packages that are available through void packages once you get that done it gives you a way of installing here and you'll need to get yourself access to allow restricted programs and there's it's an error right here it does not show you a forward slash in front of etsy but it's forward slash etsy forward slash conf if you just try to run this command it's going to say error no such file but if you put that forward slash in front of that etsy it'll work just fine for myself though i went and did it manually i went to uh, etsy.conf and i just added this instead of echoing it i wanted to see if there was anything else in that file and there wasn't i created it so once that's built the web page shows you different ways of actually installing it once it's built but i found the simplest method was the easiest and it worked just fine first package i was interested in was gnome disk utility and once that once those restricted extra the packages binary packages came in void packages came in i just did a regular install of gnome disk utility and there it is works just fine this is the hard drive it's been up 17 days and seven hours all together if you believe that There's GNOME Disk Utility. So that was just one of several packages that I installed that way. I went for Featherpad. Now, when I looked at further packages in Featherpad, if I just type in F E A T H E R P A D, it's not going to return anything. Well, it did. <laughs> but you'll notice it's a capital F and a capital P. And in order to install Featherpad, I had to use the capital F and the P. But once I did that, it installed without problem. Featherpad, you see even here, it's capitalized. And then I also found DVD Backup and LibDVD CSS for those that like to look at movies. Okay, so that covers that. That's how I did it. And you can do it too. Just follow. I'll put the link in the description. Just follow there. When you get there, it'll show you if, if it's a source package or not. Go to the GitHub Void Linux Packages, Void Packages. Go to the Quick Start and just follow the instructions. Just copy and paste is what I did. And then, like I said, it shows you different ways to install by, for instance, going to the directory and then installing it. Or you could use a utility called XI and then the package name. I didn't do any of that. I, I just installed it through XBPS. And I got those things up and running. And, and there's other things I'll probably get. Uh, that's That'll do it for now, though. I'll find something else. Okay, we'll talk about VirtualBox. Okay, so I went to their webpage, handbook, voidlinux.org VirtualBox, and I followed these instructions right here. First one to install it is hyphen S, capital S, V, and then VirtualBox OSE. 
But then when I would run this modules load right out of the wiki here, although it does tell you it's deprecated, bring up a terminal, oh shift B, I'll get this error right here. And I fretted over that, trying to figure it out. Come to find out it made no difference whatsoever, and I'll show you what I did. First, I tried to reconfigure it, thinking something was wrong. Then I ran the mo uh, modules load again, and I got the same exact errors. And that's all they say, that from here to here is all there is about running void in a, as a host. Y yeah, using void as a host machine with VirtualBox. That's it. That's all the instructions they give you. I did a little digging and stuff. Here's those errors that it reported. Uh, I tried to reconfigure it. It says it was configured just right. So I removed it, uninstalled it. I opened up Octo Package, and I just typed in there Virtual Box, and you can see these are the four items that I installed. Once I got those installed, I went into my groups, and I added myself to the VBox Users Group. I rebooted. Once I rebooted, I came up and I run the Mod Pro v VBox DRV, and it worked just fine. All right, so then I rebooted one more time just to make sure, and I brought up VirtualBox, and it worked. It seemed to look like it would work and everything, but then when I went to my preferences and went to extensions, there was none in there, and so I learned something about extensions. And you can find this information here on this web link right here. But to install that, I had this entire line right here is one command. And it's about, about five lines in your terminal unless you go full screen. And I'm not sure how to get this in. I'll put this in the shoot show notes. But if you use it, make sure you copy the entire thing here. And then once that was done, to install that packages or the extension pack, I ran this command. Okay. Once that was run and installed, I ran this command. And you'll see it returns one extension package installed, gives you the name of it. But most importantly, here's what that one extension pack does. It's Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Integration for USB 2.0. USB 3.0 host controllers, webcam, virtual box, RDP, Pixie, RM, and Dixie uh, disk encryption, and NVMe. So very, very important extension. If you, if you get it, you need it. <laughs> so once that was done, I opened up virtual box. I downloaded my favorite uh, distribution, loaded it all up. <laughs> And as you'll see, I'm not going to install this. I do want it to come up, though. Come on. You can do it. I'll come right back to that. So we got the package. All right. Let's see where we're at here. There we go. Just takes it a minute sometimes with EFI boot. But so far, as you can tell, everything is normal. And I haven't installed this, so I don't know, you know, everything. But I do know that I'm online, particularly because I'm in a virtual box. <laughs> it looks like it's everything will work, and it's just fine. So that's how I did my virtual box. And I would recommend that extension pack for sure. Because like it shows you right here, it does a, a quite a bit of stuff there that's important, especially the, your USB support, your webcam, NVMe for uh, those drives. Okay, so I run another. We'll go to the next project. The next thing I wanted to know was how do I list all of my programs at one time in one command line? And this is it right here. It'll show you everything without the version numbers that you've installed or it was installed by default. A lot of stuff. Okay. 
that's a pretty nice command line right there. I won't repeat it, but you, I'm hoping you can see it well enough to copy it there. All right. Uh, one of the, another benefit of running void Linux, as far as I can tell is flat packs are available. And you'll see when I do a query or a search, there, there it is, Flatpak, Application Sandbox and Distribution. So that's available for Flatpaks. Another great thing. Also, bring up Octa Package. Steam is available. Lutris is available. Let's see. And Wine is available. So the gamers should be able to use this, I would think. Okay, so when I first booted up, I noticed my clock. If anybody watches my videos, you'll see my clock gets pimped <laughs> or riced or made the way I like it. And you can see it's right there. But when I first booted up, it, the time was wrong. So I had to find out how to set the time. So I wanted to see the time. I, I run just one command. It's called date. And that told me the time. But I knew it was wrong. So I did a little research and this is so familiar with not this part right here necessarily, but this is very familiar to Arch Linux. So I ran to change it. I, this first two options right there, that's the month. The second two is the date. The next one is the hour, which is 24 hour clock. And then this was the minute. I ran that and it immediately got the right time. To ensure that it worked and I always worked. I took this line from their wiki, and it's the exact same line in the Arch wiki. Ran that to set my local time. Even though I did this in the installation, for some reason it, it didn't carry over, and I don't know why. I just know this is what I did to correct it. Here's the web page I used to get this information. And the next thing I run as root user was a hardware clock, just like I did in Arch Linux. And that worked. My clock's right. I've also pimped it out <laughs> by giving it a custom format here. And let's see, I think that's it. So let me just minimize that and get that out of the way. See if there's anything on here I wanted to touch on. Uh, run it, void handbook for the services. This tells you quite a bit about the services. Uh, run it using run it. Configuring it, using it, turning services up and down. Very easy. It'll stop, restart, or stop, start, stop, or restart the system services. It's SV up and then the service. SV down, then the service. SV restart and the service. This is all done as root, by the way. And then the status, if you wanted to find out the status. Very simple to use. And I just, I'm amazed at this. <laughs> I don't understand why it's so low on DistroWatch. All the packages, you saw all the packages I've installed. Everything I wanted is pretty much in this system. I think this is one, one a spot in the void in my heart. <laughs> I'm sorry if that was bad humor. So I guess that's going to wrap this up. I've been living in void for at least a week now. And most of that was in a virtual box. And once I, once I figured out that, uh, glib C actually has a few programs that depend on that, that will not work in their muzzle or muscle M U S L. I, well, I decided to go ahead and just go with glib C. That's what we're looking at right here. So that's, that's what I did. And once I knew all my packages were available and how to get ones that wasn't readily available, such as GNOME Disk Utility, Featherpad, of all things, you would think that would be in the repositories, but it's not, and who cares? I got it anyway. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you from another video. Peace out, y'all. Bye.